Hello kids, uh, my name is Mr. Bobatich. I work in the administration building. I'm a supervisor in the curriculum and instruction department. Some people know me as the data guy. Today, I'll be reading a book to all of you. Uh, great book, it's called There's No Such Thing as a Dragon. The author is Jack Kent, and I hope you enjoy this fiction book. There's no such thing as a dragon. Billy Bixby was rather surprised when he woke up one morning and found a dragon in his room. It was a small dragon about the size of a kitten. The dragon wagged its tail happily when Billy patted its head. Billy went downstairs to tell his mother, there's no such thing as a dragon, said Billy's mother. And she said it like she meant it. Billy went back to his room and began to dress. The dragon came close to Billy and wagged its tail, but Billy didn't pat it. If there's no such thing as something, it's silly to pat it on the head. Billy washed his face and hands and went down to breakfast. The dragon went along. It was bigger now, almost the size of a dog. Billy sat down at the table. The dragon sat down on the table. This sort of thing was not usually permitted, but there wasn't much Billy's mother could do about it. She had already said there was no such thing as a dragon. And if there's no such thing, you can't tell it to get down off the table. Mother made some pancakes for Billy, but the dragon ate all of them. Mother made some more, but the dragon ate those too. Mother kept making pancakes until she ran out of batter. Billy only got one of them, but he said that was all he really wanted anyway. Billy went upstairs to brush his teeth. Mother started clearing the table. The dragon, who was quite as big as mother by this time, made himself comfortable on the hall rug and went to sleep. By the time Billy came back downstairs, the dragon groaned so much he filled the hall. Billy had to go around by way of the living room to get to where his mother was. I didn't know dragons grew so fast, said Billy. There's no such thing as a dragon, said Mother firmly. Cleaning the downstairs took Mother all morning. What with the dragon in the way and having to climb in and out of windows to get from room to room. What a silly dragon. By noon, the dragon filled the whole house. Its head hung out the front door, its tail hung out the back door, and there wasn't a room in the house that didn't have some part of the dragon in it. When the dragon awoke from his nap, he was hungry. A bakery truck went by. The smell of fresh bread was more than the dragon could resist. The dragon ran down the street after the bakery truck. The house went along, of course, like the smell, the, like the shell on a snail. There's the dragon.
The mailman was just coming up the path with some mail for the Bixby's when their house rushed past him and headed down the street. He chased the Bixby's house for a few blocks, but he couldn't catch it. When Mr. Bixby came home for lunch, the first thing he noticed was that the house was gone. Luckily, one of the neighbors was able to tell him which way it went. Mr. Bixby got in his car and went looking for the house. He studied all the houses as he drove along. Finally, he saw one that looked familiar. Billy and Mrs. Bixby were waving from an upstairs window. Mr. Bixby climbed over the dragon's head onto the porch roof and through the upstairs window. How did this happen, Mr. Bixby asked. It was the dragon, said Billy. There's no such thing, Mother started to say. There is a dragon, Billy insisted, a very big dragon. And Billy patted the dragon on the head. The dragon wagged its tail happily. Then even faster than it had grown, the dragon started getting smaller. Soon it was kitten size again. I don't mind dragons this side, said mother. Why did it have to grow so big? I'm not sure, said Billy but I think it just wanted to be noticed. There's the dragon. The end. And I hope you enjoy the book.